like, share, and comment. Have a special guest. This is The Preachers of The 757. Thank you so much for being a special guest on The Preachers of The 757. How, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Great, I'm doing great, good. Great, How you great, doing? Great. Tell us something about yourself. Man, I up. am uh, <laughs> something about myself now. I'm just yeah. excited. I love it. Um, uh, pastoring here over 11 years. Oh wow! Pentecostal Holiness Church, yes. Churchland. Um, excited for the season that we're in. Yes. Um, the great things that God is uh, just doing in the ministry. Yes. Um, but just enjoying the journey. Just Absolutely. enjoying the journey. Um, just love being what. What God is trying to have me for yes. uh, every generation. Uh, my wife and I, we're just uh, excited uh, for what God has in store for us. Yes. Yeah. So, so tell us about the journey from um, from pastoring mm -hmm. to now becoming a bishop. Tell us because there's some listeners that don't know uh, the entails of a bishop. So talk to yeah, us. Yeah, well, let me put this out at first. Yes. Um, no matter your title, yes. once you're called to be a pastor, no Absolutely. matter what other titles or offices that you obtain, yes. um, you're, you're always still true at the core of pastor. Absolutely. I tell people all the time, I'm a bishop yes. in the Lord's church, yes. uh, but I pastor my local assembly. I love it. Um, I do that because it keeps it intimate yes. and it keeps you focused yes. on the task of what you're doing with your people in the local assembly. Yes. Um, and the journey going from being a pastor to uh, being consecrated as a bishop, yes. um, you know, it's not one for the faint hearted. Right, 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 right. Um, I understand that there are people that go through a skip steps or whatever, how they do, but yes. um, just that true um, shift yeah. and to understanding the responsibility Absolutely. Um, and the accountability yes. of being a bishop in the Lord's church, yes. um, having to defend um, the word of God in his gospel, mm. having to bring order um, to the church yeah. and um, having to make even decisions executively um, and having the authority to be able to just call into order and have the people of God uh, understand what the Lord is doing in this season. I love it. I love um, it. And oversight with that, mm -hmm. um, you execute your overseeing. Yes. You know, um, other pastors. I enjoy uh, pastoring other pastors yes. and, uh, and pouring into them. Yes. Um, I enjoy. Um, pushing people yes. to their destiny as yes. leaders. Yes. That's one thing that's dear to my heart. I love it, I love it. So, uh, as a young boy, mm -hmm. as a child, okay. did you ever think at any moment of your, law, your walk mm -hmm. that you'd become a number one pastor, let uh, alone a bishop? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, I grew up in church all yeah. my life. Love it. Uh, my grandma said that she saw the calling. You know, yeah, yeah, grandma's yeah, yeah, yeah. they saw the calling Absolutely. on the child. You know, we're right, young. Right, right, right. And, um, you know, we do things in church. I was a musician at okay. heart. And so oh, wow. Grew up, what what instruments? Uh, uh, they're drums. I was okay. drums. Okay. Okay. Uh, my brother's in the keyboard. So yes. we, we just we just all played together. Love it. But I never, I never um, knew that or even aspired yes. to really even be a pastor. Yes. Um, uh, though people had the calling, said they saw the calling on my life. Right, right. Um, and when I began to get closer in, uh, in ministry, elevating in ministry, yes. I still didn't look to be pastor. I, you wow. know, I want to be a minister of music. Yes. Um, I was great at teaching. Yes. And you can send me whatever. As a matter right. of fact, even evangelism. Right. I said, you can send me preach. I know that you're enjoying this video, but I need you to connect with us. Our mission here at AOS Inspires is to empower the world to never give up. The message is free. It's just expensive to get it out. I need you to prayerfully connect with us. If you're giving through Cash App, it's AOS Inspires. If you're giving through PayPal, it's AOS Inspires. I promise you, your seed will be a blessing to somebody else and help us to fulfill our mission. And that's to empower the world to never give up. I want to connect with you. And thank you so much for sowing into AOS Inspires. That's right, right, right. Uh, but pastoring, I seen my grandmother go right, through it. I right. seen my mother go through it. I seen um, family members and people I was close to, yes. and I understood that it wasn't something that you take lightly. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So if you can do anything, uh, redo anything along your journey, what would that be? Um, some people would say maybe start earlier. Yes, I, I, oh, wow. I, I, I kind of. I hear that a lot. I, I, hear, that I hear that a yeah, lot, yeah. and um, my thing with that is you wouldn't have been able to. Absolutely, absolutely. You wouldn't have been able to start earlier. Yes. Um, you wouldn't have got saved any earlier than you would right. have, right. whatever you knew. Right. Because God had His timing. Absolutely. Um, but here's the thing, uh, contrary to popular belief, yeah. I probably wouldn't change anything. Wow. And the reason why is because of the experiences, though I. Some I love, some I yes. didn't love. Yes. Uh, some things I went through, some things that were embarrassing, Absolutely. some things that were very painful, yes. shaped me to who I am today. My Absolutely. integrity wouldn't be what it is today mm. without going through. Did I like it then? Wow. No, but today 
I, w I actually would look back yes. and say, no, I thank God for that path Absolutely. I went through. I think a lot of people don't look at the integrity part. Right. right. Because they will look at it, I want to be on the main stage, I want the lights. And I heard, I heard uh, John uh, Gray said this. Mm. He said, the only thing that the spotlight would do is expose you. Exactly. Whether it's good, exactly. whether it's bad. And I think exactly. a lot of people take that lightly mm -hmm. about the integral stage. Mm -hmm. So what prepared you to get to the place that you are now? Well, uh, just... Understanding, understanding, I, I have a thing of, of being very serious in what I do. I love it. Um, sometimes at a fall, I pour my yes. heart into everything. Yes. And, you know, sometimes you get painful or hurt in that process. But what I understood is, um, is that my relationship with God yeah. grew out of an experience I went through. Love it. That nobody could take away from me. Yes. And because it was so intimate and because of what he did in my life, yes. um, everything going beyond that point, my relationship with God uh, means the world. You know the song, means the world to me. Yes. So with that being said, I have this thing where I don't want to displease God. I don't, wanna, I don't want him to be disappointed. Are yes. we perfect? No. no. By all means, we are going to screw right. up and mess up somewhere. We thank God that he forgives us right. our sins. Right. But the intent of me to make uh, my father in heaven proud. Yes. And in this moment, which is still emotional to me, yeah. is to make my natural dad proud. Mm, absolutely. Um, I lost him nine years ago. Oh, wow. I was able to preach his, uh, his funeral, one yes. of the greatest honors that I can do. And even to this day, it, it stings and it's hurt because yes. I want to talk to him. Yes. But one of the things I do look back also for my integrity, because yeah. I knew how my dad was, is that I wanted to make him proud. Absolutely. I wanted I wanted the name, yes. the Harvin name, right, right. to never get stained. Absolutely. So even my name in Christ, even yes. my natural name, yes. because that's all we have. Absolutely. The Bible even says that, that, you, that, that the integrity of your name yes. is even far above any riches, just to have a good name. name. Absolutely. So now who do you have now uh, in the season that you're now to pour into you, to keep you in line? to encourage you, to motivate you to keep on doing what you're doing? Well, I have various friends. My circle is, uh, is small, but yeah. um, but it's very effective. Yes. But um, I thank God for, for my pastor, yes. uh, Bishop Jerome L. Williams, yes. New Testament Church Ministries. Um, and I've been with him almost nine years. Oh, wow. um, the thing about it is, is that our connection had yeah. really nothing to do with preaching assignments, yes. uh, how often he gives me opportunities, yeah. or just name dropping, right. as, as many do. Right. Uh, but we have a relationship um, that is true to his core father yes. and son. Yes. Um, and when my father passed, um, he had actually stepped right in. It's kind of amazing that his wow. birthday and my dad's birthday are on the same day. Wow. And, um, and he helped me through that process. But yes. he is the one that pours um, into me. And um, both encouragement and yeah. correction. Love because it. you cannot get to the level where you need to in God yes. without embracing moments of correction, uh, reproof, yes. understanding that somebody is there yes. to, to align you to what God has for your life yes. and sees what God is doing. So I thank God for my bishop. Yes. I thank God for my elder, Elder yes. Shawan Williams. I thank God for my family at Global United Fellowship yes. and um, uh, Changing Hearts International Fellowship um, because of their encouragement towards me. Yes. I had a, I had a Facebook follower who said, why don't you have any holiness preachers up there? <laughs> I got one today. I got one today. But let me ask you the critical okay. question because a lot of churches, uh, especially pastors, are now trying to build out. Okay. Uh, they're trying to change the sanctuary to fit the new times and modern mm -hmm. times, and I understand that. Mm -hmm. But what would you share with some young pastor, some older pastor, mm -hmm. that want to make the changes, but there need to, that there needs to take necessary steps to get to that place? Well, we got to understand, um, and I think I, I placed this on Facebook one yeah. time, uh, trends change, but God mm. does not. And so whenever we're going to make a move yeah. to be either modernized yes. or to be relevant, yeah. we have to also not remove the relationship. Right. So we don't want to become so dynamic yeah. that there is not a standard still left yes. in order for people to understand that the church is different from yes. the world. Uh, but then also that we do live in a time right. that the effectiveness for ministry is embedded in technology. Yes. Um, we live in a time where presentation is at the far and foremost uh, a draw to people. Yes. Uh, social media, uh, media on TV, yes. um, all of these things uh, are not going away. Yes. Maybe they may even evolve. Uh, but for a pastor, you have to be uh, intent yes. 
on what you believe your fits your ministry. Um, because you may see somebody have stage lights. That yes. may not fit your ministry. Absolutely. Does not mean you're going to lose more people. Right. But you have to be able to understand what works for what God has given you. Absolutely. Um, and, I, and I can say this. Yeah. Um, our ministry here is growing. Yes. But I understand that my church may not be as large as yes. another church. But okay. one thing I learned um, in the communications field yeah. is that if you notice in the 75 City, there are brick buildings, whether yes. it's Cox or Verizon. There are brick buildings right. um, that are not so big, right. but they're called hubs. Right, right. Mm. And what happens is those hubs wow. supply services yes. to over a hundred thousand people. Yes. But they're no bigger right. than a corner block. Right, right. right so right. God put in my spirit, He says, you may not enlarge the wow. natural size of the building, wow. but your level of influence can yes. be global. Absolutely. And then understand that your community is first. Yes. And so the thing about it is, He says, just be the hub. Absolutely. And I will make lines of communications and ministries just flow from yes. it. Yes. The scripture says yes. that the water Absolutely. started as a trickle That's it. in That's the it. temple. But yes. by the time it got down Absolutely. to the major waterbed, yes. it was overflowing people so you can't disregard your mm. trickle moments mm. and this is the thing don't skip your trickle moments yes. trying to go to your overflow moments wow. and you have not prepared your people wow. for the process wow and, and the main thing i love to tell people i said this last week when i preached um there are going to be some uh, valley experiences yes. that the mountain top won't expose you to mm -hmm. what would you share with some young preacher some young pastor that's in a slump right now that say listen my church is not growing uh, I'm not seeing the numbers I want to. Mm -hmm. How would you help them to redirect their focus and focus on empowering and effectively leading the people that they're in, in over right now? Well, you said an uh, uh, important word, yep. redirect. Yes. Um, I also go a little bit further and say there's nothing wrong with revisiting. Mm. your vision yes um it, it kind of got demonized over the years that yeah. um it was bad to go back to the drawing board but yeah. it's not right, right it is right. not because sometimes in our human yeah. endeavors yes. uh we are moved so fast that we may forget yes. exactly what we was called to do absolutely what our initial vision was yes and so here as a matter of fact you mentioned that here at pacc last year our our our, our thing for 2018 was yeah. focused yes but we dealt with these three uh statements right first right. build people yes then two it will build ministry yes. and then three it will build church yes. and i think if we in our press yes. to try to build ministry and right. church right right we forgot to build the people, people. And so what happens is, yes, you may have a swelling yes. because there's a difference between growth and swelling. You may have Absolutely. a swelling, Absolutely. but because of the injuries yes. that you don't have a place of healing, wow. then people will still go in and out the door. Yes. But if you build people, it yes. will end up building their families. Yes. And what I found out that we are stronger now. Yes from going through 2018 right. and into 2019 right. by this, those concepts. And so you will hear my people say, our first thing is to build people. Yes. What does it take to build people? Yes. Because the Bible clearly says that God will add to the church. Yes, as needed. It, as needed for the ministry you have been called yes. to do. Yes. But we skip that mm. trying to have something bigger. Major house. Major yes. house, yes. okay, but not effectively build people, Absolutely. families, um, and then communities, yes, because that's what God has called us to. And I see that you're going into a series uh, talking about first fruit. Yeah, uh, I want you to elaborate on that as well. But I, I believe that that's a danger, especially in the body of Christ, mm -hmm. because we want people to give their tithes. Mm -hmm. We want people to give their offers. Not so much that the preacher or the first family can, mm -hmm. you know, benefit from that, but right. for the church as whole. But I believe that most churches expect so much from the pew, mm -hmm. but they're not training them why I'm expecting you this. Exactly. Or, or, or getting back to the point where you said about building people. Mm -hmm. Let me help you build yourself uh, up in your finances. You're right. Show you how to manage your money properly. Right. Show you how to be that better husband. So, exactly. so talk, talk to me about you know those series that you preach about. What gives you that unction to preach those sir, those series? Well, I thank God just for the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, and and. And I really believe the Holy Spirit works with the passion yes. that God has placed in the person. Absolutely. Um, as a matter of fact, we just came out of a series entitled CrossFit, mm. where we was dealing with the spiritual, the mental, and the physical I love that. health of the Christian believer. So how did it help you when you shut down the whole service and said, listen, we're doing a workout service this Sunday? Well, because I understood, yeah. <laughs> especially in the African-American community, yeah. I understood we can do church well. Yes. We yes. got that. Matter of fact, Absolutely. I mean, hands down, right. we can get it in. But what I found out is still there's a lot of Christian believers yeah. whose health is very poor. Yes. Um, whose eating habits are very poor. Yes. And so some people say, like, well, how do you deal with that on, you know, it's not a deal with right. on Sunday morning. It should be in, embedded mm. 
and mm -hmm. ministry right. of the gospel message. Right. God, Holistic. Jesus dealt, yeah, holistically. Mm -hmm. Jesus dealt with people being healed. Yes. Jesus dealt with people being hungry. Yeah. People dealt with, it. matter of fact, just look at Luke. Yes. He says, I come to the brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. He says, I come also to uh, heal those yes. that are brokenhearted. I come to uh, he, um, those that are sick, those yeah. that are blinded. Yeah. I come to preach the gospel. I yes. have the authority yes. to do these things. But the greatest part we struggle with is the heart and the broken heart mm. so when you're saying these series it has to hit and meet people where they are absolutely so first fruits is not an attempt yeah for a fun for a fundraiser right, right it's right, not right, an attempt right, right. to try to hit budget right, because if right. you attack it that way right what happens in the after and i have to say this and yeah and and this was taught to me some years ago yeah uh from a statistic um, that's in the black church. Yes. We are good at events, but horrible at processes. Mm. So that's why we have multiple anniversaries yes. trying to raise money. We yes. have all these bake sales trying yes. to raise money, yes. but we never teach the people the process of giving. Absolutely. So this month we're going to be dealing with, which is our subtext, the blessing in the honor and the obedience, mm. because I don't want people to just come up and not understand why, why? they are doing it. Absolutely. The Bible is clearly a book yes. of processes. Yes, yes. And he took his people from Egypt yes. all the way to Canaan. But Absolutely. in the middle, he had to lay out the processes Process. to change mm. their mind. Yes. Then you won't even have to worry about, you know, how to pull from the right. people right. because they will have it concept in their right. mind. I love that. I love that. Especially when you teach the people to be givers. Right, to be You givers. don't have to worry about having budget meetings and scratching your head and pull right. out your hair and say I'm not going to meet that right. because I've already taught my people how to be givers right? and, and be cheerful givers. And let me say this last thing because yeah. we're going to go through those challenges. That's Absolutely. one thing about pastoring. You're going to have low seasons. Yes. You're going to have moments yes. like, Lord, the, the money yes. is not coming in. Right. But one thing we have to understand too yeah. is that as you teach the people yes. to believe that the that the rules and things that we see in the corporate world were yeah. first given to the kingdom. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. It, and it's an indictment on the church yes. that a corporate business that wouldn't that doesn't even see God like we do yes will tie absolutely will sow yes they, they will never come to church but they'll sow and find their business growth because tithing and sowing had really nothing to do with salvation absolutely it was a principle for yes. God's people. people now when you are a believer yes those principles should be a draw to you absolutely what do I need to do to please God in all areas of my life I love and it. one of those areas is giving not because the, the you know for the pastors just roll around in the top level car That's it. but your own family, yes. your yes. own business. We yes. teach on entrepreneurship Absolutely. and I push that almost every Sunday yeah. that if we have business owners in here, I'm praying over business Absolutely. owners Absolutely. because I want them to in take the word of God yes. and embed it into their in business. Into their business. I love it. Now, Bishop, I got to put you on the spot. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> because especially in the African-American community, okay. we have a uh, church um, and 200, 300, 400 people show up okay. on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. But to do the work during the week, or do the work on other events, you have the same 10 people, okay. same eight yeah, people. Yeah. How do you avoid burnout? And how do you, I know this is the number one question that many churches are asking. Mm -hmm. How do I get the other pew members involved? Right. So I won't keep on consec consecutively using the same eight, the same four, the same five. Okay. Well, here, here's the, there's a twofold uh, answer on that. Number yeah. one, um, never forget discipleship. Mm. That, that because we're good with yeah. positioning people. Yes. Um, okay, we need an area done yeah. to handle it in the church. We need this. We need this. We right. need a head of our ushers. We need a choir person. Right. We need this. Right. Right. But when you understand disciple, when you embed discipleship yeah. into your ministry, yeah. you let everybody know that is being discipled in yes. Christ. That everybody has an assignment. Absolutely. Some assignments may not be out front. Yes. But what I do all the time is is that we have this thing at least on a monthly basis, yes. where uh, we open up uh, people that may be interested yes. in certain levels of ministry. Yes. And uh, we open it up and they'll come. Mm -hmm. And then what we do is empower the leaders that may be over those said ministries yes. and connect them to them and begin to process them into that particular ministry. Uh, my thing is, I don't like anybody just to sit back. Now, mm. granted, there's some people that is good with that. Yes. I'm, I'm good with that. But the burnout comes from when you are so comfortable and pastors and you really yeah. when you're so comfortable because of one person was able to do it so great mm. um, one thing in the movie the black panther yeah um and I, this line always resonated with me when black panther's sister said this right. just because it's working mm. doesn't mean it can't be improved wow. 
and we are good with it yes. working, yes. but never seek the part to really improve. I love it. Right, love and it. in order to improve, yes. um, you have to have fresh eyes. Yes. Um, I, I heard even T.D. Jake said, if you are the oldest one on your cabinet, absolutely, that you got the wrong cabinet. Right, 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 um, right. You you have to you have to change. No, the young, the youngest on your cabinet, you got more cabinet. You have to find people younger yes. than you. And you have to trust them mm. from their perspective. Fresh ideas. And oversee that. that if we're pastors, we got to be overseas. You got to release them. So yes. they may say something that yes. might be, oh man, that's a little edgy. Right. But hear them out. Right. right. They hear right. them out right. because what we were used to right. may have changed a little bit right. Right. to right. draw right. the people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, so let, let's talk about this. Um, been here 11 years. Okay. Um, there, there's so many pastors that battle with, and, I get, and this is the reason why we started the Preachers of the 757. The number one question was, how do I invoke growth, numerically, financially, and spiritually? That's why we established the Preachers of 757 to encourage preachers all over the world. So being here 11 years, I know you've seen the good, the bad, yeah. and the ugly. Yeah. Finances, I know you've seen it high. Also, I know you've seen it low. The attendance, I know you've seen it high. I know you've seen it low. So with that, those different variations of ministry, mm -hmm. how have you survived to get to the place that you are now? I survived by grace. Yes. And, and the reason why I say that is because um, um, we have seen in the recent time in the yeah. news and things of pastors um, that have committed suicide. Absolutely. Um, been battling depression. Yeah. Leaving the church. Yeah. Um, it is a real thing. Absolutely. And, and to be honest with you, a, a pastor that has been in leadership for quite some time, yes. any amount of time, has experienced this. Yes. Number one thing I would tell young, especially young pastors, get with your pastor. Yes. Please get with somebody that you can sit there and talk to. Right. Um, understand that 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 the church also must po uh, uh, partner up yes. with uh, 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 psychologists and psychiatrists mm. and Christian. They got them out there. Right. Uh, you need somebody to talk to. But here's the thing that I found to navigate my way yes. through those ups and downs: mm. uh, that the people of God belong to God. Yes. But you have to understand that. There are going to be shifts. Absolutely. Um, you're going to lose some great people. Yes. You're going to lose some people you probably wanted to lose. Yes, yes, um, yes You're going yes. to get some people in your church that you're excited to have. Yeah. You're going to get some people in your church you wish never right. came. Right, right, so right, right, you right, have right. those ebb and flows. Right. Uh, but what you have to realize is that they are people. We are in the people business. Yes, yes. Um, and it's going to shift that way. But when you have those low moments, yes. you, you have to find somebody to talk to. Absolutely. Um, uh, connect. To grow your ministry, mm -hmm. you can't take it mm -hmm. anywhere you have not been. Mm -hmm. I'm an advocate on training. We, yeah. we, we, we go to revival, man. We love to go yes. hear our favorite preachers. You yes. know, we they say we got to have a, a, a revival and bring in preachers. Right. And here's another thing. Uh, 757, we got some major major Absolutely. preachers in yes. this area yes. um, and I know it's the popular thing to pull people from out of town yes. uh, but make sure, especially congregants, make right. sure that you treat your own pastor international mm. I've seen this, I have to yes. stop here and say that I've yes. seen this happen one time yes. uh, for a pastor that's, 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 uh, that pastors in this area mm -hmm. and her church had an international day for her pastor mm. they paid her like they would pay an international pastor, wow. They, wow. they treated her, yes. they did everything that yes. they would have done, if they would have paid two thousand dollars honorarium yes for a pastor came in they gave yes. it to her wow what would encourage the local Absolutely. pastor uh, if people really believe in what we have locally yes um but yeah we have to we have to find and go to places and get trained Absolutely. you know not just necessarily get preached to yes um in a revival but go sit in classrooms right uh listen to those and listen be able to listen to those that are not necessarily mm -hmm. in our circle yes um uh, people um, of, of different backgrounds, yes, people of different races, yes. uh, pastors of different um, uh, ethnicity yes. to, to see because the church is global. Absolutely. So um, and, and it really helps you out yes, because you does. can't take them where you have not been. Absolutely. This is the last question. I want to okay. say thank you so much. Oh, for no being, problem, Yes, man. man. No You're problem, very, man. very enlightening. <laughs> but what would you share with some pastors, some seasoned pastors, some young pastor mm -hmm. that's coming to the, into the fold to say, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm terrified. I'm terrified. I want to give up now because it's not even going the way I <laughs> thought it was going to go. What kind of words of encouragement? First sharing? of all, I just love you all to life. Um, I just want to encourage you because you may be one of those that are going through a season right now. Um, where you're ready to give up, you're ready to throw in the towel, your ministry is not popping off, um, the growth is not evident, and you're saying, is this even worth it? I come to tell you, it is worth it. Uh, changing people's lives, whether it's a great masses of people or whether it's two or three, it's 
always a prosperous thing in the eyesight of the Lord. Go back and revisit your vision. Find that place where you love to do what God has called you to, because it is there. But sometimes we have moved further down the journey so far that we forgot where we left it at. Find that love for people, find that love for ministry. And I promise you that if you continue to pray and just allow God to navigate you through these seasons, it's not gonna, my mother always says, it's not gonna always be like this. Trust me, promise me, I've been there, but I've seen God turn it around in your favor. So just be encouraged and be focused in this season and realize that God is still using you. If you're still at the helm, he still has use for you. Look, I am Bishop Marlon T. Harvin, Senior Pastor of Pentecostal Holiness Church. We invite you on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. for our Sunday morning worship experience and Tuesday night, which we entitle Worship and Word Rewind at 7 p.m. If you need all more information, just go to our website, www.phccva.net, and you can connect with us there. I love you to life. Until the next time, continue to be blessed. Keep your head up, stay focused, and go get them for the Lord's sake.